Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about the different components of Frame Relay. And if you haven't yet, or if it's been a while, it's probably a good idea to review the ICND1 tutorial on Frame Relay. Just as a refresher, it's located in the Wide Area Network section. And we're going to continue that conversation here, but we're going to do it in a lot more detail. Okay, so to get started, the first thing you'll realize as you learn about Frame Relay, the concepts as well as the configurations, is that it's a lot more complex than the point-to-point -point circuits we've talked about so far. So we just finished up, <clears throat> just finished up with point-to-point -point protocol. Those concepts and configuration tasks are definitely much simpler than what you're going to have to cover with Frame Relay. However, that said, don't worry because we cover Frame Relay in nice bite-sized chunks and they're going to be easy to digest and by the time you're done with this entire frame relay meal you're going to have a complete understanding of what makes up frame relay okay so frame relay is a packet switching technology and it was very popular in the 1990s and it, in fact it still exists in many production networks today which is one of the reasons why you have to know it because you could encounter it and have to support it one of the major reasons why Frame Relay uh, got so popular is that it saves you a lot of money. So it's a cost-efficient solution to connecting multiple sites. Quite simply, with Frame Relay, you need fewer circuits and less hardware. So fewer routers and interfaces on those routers because you have fewer circuits between all of your locations. And you'll see all the details of that as we get into this tutorial. Now, Frame Relay is considered to be multi-access. In other words, many different devices can connect to the Frame Relay network. And this is very similar to the local area networks that we've talked about already. So if you think about an Ethernet LAN segment and how many different devices can connect to that same segment, well, that approach is, is very similar with Frame Relay. However, Frame Relay does not support broadcasts. So Frame Relay, Frame Relay is considered a non-broadcast technology. And when you put these two things together, you're going to hear this quite often. Frame Relay is a non-broadcast multi-access technology, or NBMA. That's all it means, those two terms put together. Okay, so let's look at some Frame Relay components. And really, as you're going to see very soon, you are already familiar with some of these components. It's just in Frame Relay, they have a special name. So we'll begin with the routers, routers A, B, and C. In Frame Relay, these are known as Data Terminal Equipment, or DTE. That's the acronym. All that means is that the router is either the ultimate source or the ultimate destination of traffic that's going to run across our network. Okay, so keep that term in mind. We have DTEs, each one of these routers. Now, our Frame Relay service provider is represented by the cloud in the middle. And each one of these routers is going to connect to that service provider via a serial connection. And that connection is referred to as an access link. So this could just be a T1 or a T1 that has maybe a fraction of the speed. So perhaps a fractional T1. You can get different types of serial connections into a frame relay service provider. And the speed or the clock rate of that connection is referred to as the access rate. It's another term you'll come across as well. What's the access rate on your access link? All right, so DTEs, and now we have access links. The third component here is what's on the other end of that access link. And quite simply, that's just referred to as the frame relay switch. Now, just like the routers are called DTEs, the frame relay switch is referred to as a data communications equipment, or DCE. And all that means is that the frame relay switch is what's responsible for providing the frame relay service. It's part of the uh, service provider's network. All right, so we have DCEs as well. Now, our router and our frame relay switch are going to communicate with each other regularly. And they do this by a protocol known as LMI, or Link Management Interface. And this is really just a way for the two devices to send messages to each other. Now in those messages, the router can learn about the operational status of the frame relay network. 
and also the routers can learn about the addresses of the other routers on the network. So router A, for instance, can learn about the frame relay address of routers B and C through the LMI messages it receives from the frame relay switch. Now, addressing in frame relay is a lot different than what we've talked about so far with strictly IP addressing. So we're going to cover those interesting details in a dedicated tutorial. But for now, just keep in mind we can learn information about them through the LMI messages. Also, the LMIs serve as keep-alives so that the router and the frame relay switch, by sending and receiving these messages, they know that the other side is up and functioning. There are three types of LMIs you need to be aware of. The first one is the Cisco proprietary LMI, and on Cisco devices that is the default that is used. The second one is known as ANSI, and the third one ITUT, or sometimes you'll see it as Q933A. Those are both open standards. Regardless of which one you use, both sides, so the router, which is the DTE, and the frame relay switch, your DCE, they must use the same type. Otherwise, they won't be able to, to communicate. However, by default, the LMI can be auto-sensed by the router, or you can manually configure it. So you've got, an app, you've got an option there. However, just remember, when we talk about LMIs, we're only talking about communications between the router and the frame relay switch. Now when we talk about two DTEs, or two routers talking to each other, then we need to discuss encapsulation. In other words, how will the frames look like? How will they be defined when they're sent from router A all the way over to router C? Well, quite simply, there's going to be a header and a trailer, and we'll look at the details of those in a second, but let's just make something really clear. Only DTEs, in this case our routers, care about the encapsulation. So encapsulation only has to deal with router-to-router -router communication. LMI is just router-to-frame-relay switch. It's a messaging protocol. In fact, the frame-relay switch doesn't even care about what kind of encapsulation is used between the routers. Now, there are a couple different types of encapsulation, and we're just about to get to those. Regardless of which one we use, each router must use the same encapsulation type. Now, going back to the definition of the uh, encapsulation, there's a header and a trailer, and inside the header, we find a lot of good information. We're going to find something called the DLC, the DLCI, and that is just a layer two frame relay address. As I mentioned earlier, we have a dedicated tutorial for that. We also find some interesting things, the FECN, the BECN, and the DE. Now these are three mechanisms to help us deal with congestion on the frame relay network. And since they're uh, kind of interesting, we're gonna talk about them also in a dedicated tutorial. For now, just keep in mind that all of, all of that information is located in the header of the frame relay frame. Now the trailer is actually much simpler. All we have there is the frame check se sequence, and that's used for error detection, okay? Now, there are two types of encapsulation, and the question is why? Well, quite simply, like most things, it's been an evolution of the technology. So originally, the encapsulation did not include the protocol of the payload, of the data. Do you remember when we talked about HDLC, and originally it did not tell the router uh, what protocol is inside the data, and then Cisco came out with its proprietary HDLC, and then the standard PPP was created? Well, it was the same thing here. So Cisco came out with its proprietary encapsulation, and that uh, protocol field was added. And then later on, a standard, the IETF version of encapsulation, was also introduced. And that also had a field in order to let the router know what kind of protocol was inside the payload. Okay. And so these are all of the components that kind of set the landscape for our frame relay discussions. We have our DTEs, the DCEs, our access links. We have LMI and encapsulation. And each router has a single connection into the frame relay service provider. And on that single connection, they can reach every other router that's also connected to them. So that means they're saving a lot of money because you don't need a point-to-point -point circuit between every single router pair. We only have three routers here, so it wouldn't be such a big deal. However, what if you had 50 or 60 routers? It'd be a lot more expensive. You would have many more circuits, 
and you would probably have to buy higher end routers at each location in order to support the number of serial links you would have to terminate. So Frame Relay is definitely the uh, uh, money saver when it comes to connecting many different sites. Now if you're wondering how Frame Relay uh, enables each of these routers to talk to multiple routers even though they only have a single connection, well then you're ready to learn about the next step which is the virtual circuits and we're going to cover that in a dedicated tutorial. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that Frame Relay is a non-broadcast multi-access technology and devices that connect to that network are known as DTEs or for us it was our routers. Now the routers eventually connect to a DCE which is the frame relay switch. In between them is the access link that's our serial connection between the router and the DCE. The speed or the bandwidth on that access link is commonly referred to as the access rate. And now we know that a router and a frame relay switch will talk to each other by using the LMI protocol and we also know that there are different encapsulation types that will define how the frame looks when a router sends information to another router. So encapsulation is only important between routers. Okay, so make sure you're comfortable with these concepts before moving on to the virtual circuits tutorial. Okay? And that's it. That is the frame relay components. Thanks for watching.